Hello, I'm Tim. And I'm Sally. And we're from Group, the volunteer management platform that looks after your people, communications, governance and data. And welcome to the Dropshot Drop-In. Each of, these... Each of these episodes are fresh and only five minutes long. And before we start, I'd like to point out that Sally never knows what the topic or subject could be about. In today's episode, we're talking about women in tech. And Sally, the first question I have for yourself is what experiences led you to technology as a career? Completely accidentally, Tim. <laughs> um, my, I, it led to it by me trying to solve a problem in communities. Mm. So it, it led to it via my social passions about changing the way communities think and operate. And that seems quite strange. So I've got many years of experience of uh, business, but also of youth services and education and sports and charities. And I, was, I set up around a youth club. Um, I can't remember now, 10, 12 years ago, whatever it was. A massive task, 100 young people, 20 adults overnight, and uh, a huge task on my hand for the next three years then of running this youth, youth club, sports orientated mm. youth club. And I started, people started to ask me if I could do the same for them elsewhere in local authorities that I was working with and so on. And I just sort of thought, wouldn't it be easier if we could do this in a, in a far wider reaching way? Mm. And I started talking to other people and uh, we ended up bringing technology in to solve the problem. So it was completely by accident. Mm. However, having said that, I've always had an interest in technology. So I've yeah. always been one of the first. I had a really square, heavy Apple Mac computer <coughs> 100 years ago <laughs> and, uh, and when they were first out. Mm. You know, and I was always interested in them. Hmm. And I guess the question now being, what is the sort of biggest challenge for the next generation of, of women? And I mean, I ask this to yourself and, and everyone listening, you know, if you have any ideas and thoughts on this and, you know, how can, how can we, yourself, other people listening, be a, a sort of strong role model for them? Hmm. I think what women need to understand with technology is it's not just about coding. Hmm. So coding's a fantastic job. And if, if a young person is interested in coding, I would encourage them to get into hmm. it. But that's not the only job. There are many jobs in technology, and that can be in project management, um, in running the business. It can be um, in digital marketing. Uh, there, there's so many different uh, different facets of it. And P, you know, PR now, it's all about the marketing. It's, it really has changed. There's many opportunities. But I think it's more about being willing and open to the ideas of what's there and taking some of the skills that young women have got now and applying them to technology in a way that just hasn't been thought before. So it's about asking questions, it's about reading a lot, it's about keeping in touch, you know, watching LinkedIn all the time, mm. reading the articles. That's what I encourage the young women in this business, in group, to do. I encourage them to read all the articles on LinkedIn, read about technology, read about social good, the things that we're interested in. And I think that's really important. Yeah, and I think as well as that, you know, with, with the technology side of things, it moves so quickly, so fast. Mm -hmm. And the the other point is that it's an expensive thing to get into. Yeah, it really is. I do think it's a bit like opening a hole in the ground and throwing, you know, c cash down it. And that's why it's good to provide off the shelf solutions wherever mm -hmm. possible. And I really encourage organisations, particularly charities who are cash strapped, not to start building their own solutions. I think it's a huge mistake because you you simply can't keep up now building something that's fit for the future and then constantly updating it has got to be in a in fit into a business model that will keep that recurring revenue going mm. so that you can keep updating it. Because otherwise you've built something, you put it on the shelf, it's used, and then it's out of date six months later. Because yeah. everything's moving faster than the ability we have to adapt at the moment. Mm. And you know, what do you believe that young women need to know, hear, see, to consider technology as a career option? Well, as I say, reading articles and keeping in touch and networking, I can't emphasise that enough that you, you still, when I go to the occasional network, I don't go to very many now, but I go to the occasional networking events, um, you, you are getting some young women along, but there could be a lot more, you know, mm. and I don't think those sort of late teenagers, early 20, 20 year olds quite understand how important it is to do that networking and um, in contact. So one of our uh, young women in, in group called Katie, um, I advised her to do that from the beginning, get in contact. And she's been phenomenal at it. Mm. She's 
amazing. We'll, we'll have her on oh, here absolutely. at some point. She keeps in touch with everyone. She communicates really heavily. And she's really found the power of that communication. But a lot of people don't want to do it. Mm. And they don't want to do it. Or they don't want to go face to face. And we talked about this in another session. Yeah. You know? But they need to develop, you know, some resilient skills and they need to um, develop that confidence to be able to stand in front of people and stand in that hour five minute alarm. That is our and five they, minutes. They, they need to be able to stand in front of people. They need to be able to talk over the phone. They need to be able to present themselves and they need to be really positive about what they can do. Um, young women, women per se, you know, all together are not very good at saying how we're good at things, you mm. know. Um, and might often sort of focus on what we're not so good at. And I do try to, well, I do quite a lot of mentoring with young women, and I always try to encourage them to be upfront about what they're good at, you know, um, and just kind of put to one side what they feel they're not so good at. Mm. And actually, what they feel they're not so good at, they actually really might be quite good at that as well. Sometimes that mentoring is important to help draw out some of those positivities mm. to help develop them. I do quite a lot of that, and, I, and I, I, I really enjoy doing that because people hide their light under the bushel quite often. Mm. Amazing. Thank you. The five minutes has gone. Again, they, they fly by. They, they really do. Again, thanks everyone for listening. If you do want to add any thoughts or comments down below, then please feel free to do so. Or again, if you want to get in touch with either a joke for Sally or just you know speak to one of us here at Group, then the contact for that is support at group.com. Finally, the joke of the day today is <laughs> if, um, if anyone's looking uh, at the moment, I'm selling my Hoover. Uh, not that it's not broken or anything, but it's just collecting dust. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.